afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ram Chat. We have a very special edition for you this afternoon. Uh, we have a special AMA with University President Dr. Tony Frank. Uh, before I have him introduce himself, my name is Will Rudiman, and I serve as an admissions counselor here at Colorado State University in the Office of Admissions. I um, just want to take a quick note. Students, I hope you're out there enjoying some time off during this summer break right now. We know that time off is very important as you're going through this transition, whether you're a high school junior or you're going to be an incoming freshman here at CSU. So please take that time uh, and enjoy the summer months. Just a quick reminder for those that might be tuning in for the first time, or if you're a returning viewer, um, we hope you ask some questions during this time. Uh, so feel free to send all those questions via our social media sites. You can ask questions via our Twitter at hashtag RamChat. You can ask questions via our Facebook page through the Office of Admissions. You can log on through Google Plus to our RamChat page and ask questions there, or on our admissions website through the Ask Tony um, backslash and ask questions via our Google form. So there's many ways you can ask questions uh, this afternoon. We've had some questions come in over the past couple weeks, but if you have a question you want to ask Dr. Frank, by all means, go ahead and ask that question. So I'm going to take the opportunity now to introduce the 14th president of Colorado State University, Dr. Tony Frank. Take it away, doctor. Thanks, Will. Uh, it's great to be with all of you the, this afternoon, and thanks for taking the time to share your questions with us, and, and thanks for your interest uh, in Colorado State University. I've been at CSU for 22 years now. I've been um, president for about six and a half. Um, I came here from Oregon State University uh, originally. Uh, I'm from a farm in, in north central Illinois. Um, my wife Patty and I have uh, raised three daughters here in, in the Fort Collins area. Um, and my youngest is uh, a junior here at Colorado State. So I, uh, I'm very proud of the university. I think I, uh, um, I and I'm in incredibly pleased that uh, two of my own daughters have selected to come here and one's here now. So I think that probably speaks volumes for, for how uh, good I feel about these programs. So uh, if you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to try and answer them for you. Thank you, Dr. Frank. So the first question that came in was from Jackson, and Jackson asked, what distinguishes CSU from other universities here in the state and across the nation? So within American higher education, there are all sorts of different universities, right? And, and there are certainly commonalities, but I think there are as well some important differences. Um, Colorado State University is a land-grant university. That means it's uh, part of a system of universities established in 1862 by President Abraham Lincoln. The, the principle of these universities was that everyone with the talent and the motivation to, to earn a world-class university degree ought to have that opportunity in this country. Before then, higher education had been largely the province uh, of, of the children of the upper class. And with that signature on July 2nd, 1862, Lincoln changed that dramatically and said that in this country, uh, what matters is talent and motivation, and everyone who's earned that opportunity should have that chance. Each state in the country received a, a grant of land to establish a university. The universities originally were to have had a focus on agricultural and mechanical sciences, A and M. Um, and you'll still uh, Colorado at one state at one point was a Colorado A and M. Um, in the early 1960s, we shifted that to Colorado State University, as did uh, most of the land-grant universities. And certainly over those 150 years, our institutions have changed from having sort of an agriculture and, and uh, an engineering focus to still being very strong in those disciplines, but we've matured into comprehensive uh, research universities that, that really cover the full spectrum, the, the visual and the performing arts, the humanities, the social sciences, certainly the life sciences, uh, and a variety of, of uh, other professions. But many institutions, uh, like land grants, have a responsibility to do research, um, certainly a commitment to do exceptional teaching, uh, and certainly a commitment to engagement, to service. Um, the land grant mission is effectively the creation of new knowledge, uh, the passing of that knowledge to the next generation and the application of that knowledge for the benefit of, of society. Many pieces of that mission are mirrored in other universities. There are certainly uh, a wide spectrum of access-oriented institutions. There are certainly, uh, in America, a wonderful set of private universities. There are certainly uh, research institutions that perhaps aren't as uh, focused on the access mission. To my mind, what's unique about the land-grant university mission is that we're focused on all of those. We're committed to access 
but access to excellence, and excellence as defined across that spectrum of teaching, research, and service to our society. The other thing I would add is that uh, having been at several universities, both as a student and as uh, a faculty member and, and here at CSU as an administrator, I would say that one of the, the challenges for a large comprehensive research university is how to have students feel that they're part of a smaller community and how to have them engage uh, with their institution. Um, and of the, the big research universities that I've had the privilege of being at, I think CSU gets that balance uh, of caring about teaching, of caring about the students, of making the place feel smaller and more intimate to our students, uh, while still maintaining the full spectrum of opportunities that, that only a comprehensive research university can provide. I think we get that balance uh, right, and, and I think we do it better than any, any place I've been around. Thank you, Dr. Frank. And I can certainly echo, as a, as a former student here at CSU, when I was going through this search process as a high school junior and senior, I, it was that balance and that community feel and that I felt as a prospective student and certainly something that I found here uh, during my time on campus. So thank you for bringing that up. So this next question comes from one of our international students. Her name is Shang. And she was wondering why tuition and fees increase every year, and where is this increase going to, and why is it necessary? So the question of tuition going up at American institutions is uh, a big and an important topic. And I suspect that, that Shang will regret having asked it about 30 minutes from now when I'm still talking about the topic. Um, let me give a couple answers to that. For, um, for students within the state of Colorado, um, and, and in fact students all across the country uh, within the United States, I would say this. Throughout our lifetimes, who pays for education has been transferring. If you went back 20 years ago and combined the level of state support per student, um, that's taxes, public tax dollars, that represent an investment in our society in saying uh, that we want to make sure that the cost of education is affordable for people so that we have in our future a critical mass of teachers and physicians and engineers and accountants and those sorts of things. If we make that in, we make that investment through our tax dollars. So if you combine state support per student and tuition, those are the two sources from which a university receives the money to educate a student. If you combine those two sources and adjust them for inflation, we educate a student for the same amount today that we did 20 years ago. Now, two decades is a pretty remarkable period of time to maintain your cost structure while improving your quality and your capacity, which American higher education has done. But what's changed over that 20 years is that 20 years ago, two-thirds of that cost was paid for by taxpayers, chipping in to buy down that cost of education. Today, nearly 75% of the cost of education is paid for by the student and his or her family. Now that's a, a, a topic that I would argue is of critical importance um, to American public higher education and something that we as a society really need to engage. We need to ask ourselves uh, at, a, at the dawn of the global knowledge economy, do we want to be the first generation in America's history since land-grant universities were created to say to our children, we, we don't think we can afford to make the same investments in you that our parents and our grandparents made in us. Now, I think our society will get that right uh, and that we will continue to invest in public higher education. And so I think a lot of the tuition increases that you have been seeing over the past two decades uh, are going to be a fairly transient phenomenon, and I think that cost structure will stabilize much more effectively as we look into the future. Now, what I would say to uh, students out, uh, coming in from outside the state of Colorado, whether you're from uh, other states uh, in this country or whether you're an international student, we recognize um, that the dollars that come from the state of Colorado don't help subsidize the cost of education here for all of you. Uh, and that's why we believe that within the national marketplace we've looked at our non-resident tuition rates um, and while I would, would tell you that uh, we're very pleased with where those are, we understand that it's a big investment. Anyone who's making an investment uh, to attend uh, either a private institution where tuitions can be fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year, or if you're making a choice to attend uh, an institution outside your own state and pay the non-resident tuition, where at CSU you're you're looking at something uh, in the twenty-four to twenty-five thousand dollar range. 
we believe that we're still a good value within that marketplace, but we understand it is a major investment that you're talking about making. And what our policy has been and what it will continue to be for the foreseeable future is to say that we don't anticipate that non-resident cost going up more than 3% annually. Um, that's a position we've taken the entire time I'm president, uh, and, and I don't, as I said, anticipate that that's a position that will change in the foreseeable future. I, I should add one other thing, that tuition increases, well, as a parent of, of three daughters um, who were all in college at the same time, one is now graduated, I understand that as tuition goes up, it, it has a big impact. Um, but I would also say that I believe that it is among the very best investments that people can make and your tuition at Colorado State we have a very active and very uh, open and transparent budgeting process where we really encourage students uh, and parents to get involved and understand where tuition dollars are going what the entire budget structure of the university looks like tuition is critically important to keeping the quality of the education high and at the end of the day that's what you're purchasing is a degree that to employers uh, means something, that they recognize the value of the institution that you attended and that you can be proud to say, uh, I went and I earned that degree from Colorado State University. Thank you, Dr. Frank. As an out-of-state student originally here at CSU, that was obviously a major concern for me, and I really appreciated the transparency that this university um, has taken during the time of your presidency. One of my favorite study breaks was taking time to read your very extensive budget emails uh, that you would send to everyone across campus, so I appreciate you uh, during that transparency and, and making that available for students and staff as well here at the university. Um, I'm not so sure that everybody felt that was one of the best breaks from their study time, Will. <laughs> well, I was a little bit unique in that, that I needed some extra things to look at uh, during that time. Uh, a follow-up question to that, and you touched briefly upon this, Dr. Frank. Um, this question came in from Samuel, and he asked, what would you say to students who um, say college isn't worth it anymore? Yeah, this is unfortunately a narrative you hear a lot of now. And, and coming out of the recession in particular, you can always find someone who, who uh, knows someone with... Um, a, a wonderful college degree uh, who's working at a job um, that they weren't necessarily trained for, right? And so the concern that's out there is, does a college degree buy you what it used to buy you? And I would argue that the data on this, um, despite all the anecdotal stories that are out there, the data on this are very, very clear, and that a college degree is still one of the best investments you can make. The Pew Foundation did a recent study that, again, talks about the lifetime earnings of college graduates versus non-college graduates. Stanford's provost, uh, who's an economist, just wrote a, a wonderful uh, refereed uh, scientific article talking about uh, what he calls the college premium, the difference in estimated hourly wages between someone with a college degree and without a college degree. The college premium uh, that gap is now higher than it's ever been in the history of tracking that. Uh, the American Enterprise Institute just went back and recalculated the average annual return on a guaranteed student loan as 15 percent annually based on those longer term earnings. We know from the unemployment data of the last recession that with each successive increase in the educational level we had a 50 percent drop in the unemployment rate for each for each group. At public universities in America, the average uh, debt of a student who graduates with debt, not the average of everyone, but the average of those who graduate with debt, is around $23,000. CSU is a bit below that. America's public universities have the lowest loan default rates anywhere in the country. And I think all of these economic data on, on uh, salary benefits, on unemployment rates, all of these things indicate that making an investment in your college education, even if it involves taking on a, a certain level of guaranteed student loan debt, are among the very best investments that people can make in their future, uh, both economically and I would argue as well, one of the best investments you can make in yourself as a person. A college education exists far beyond the walls of the lecture hall or even the laboratory. The experiences will change who you are as a person. They will, if we do our jobs well, and I think we will, they will cause you to challenge how you hear things. And the way you view information and the world, the lens through which you view it, will be forever changed. And that's an important perspective to take away from a college education. 
Thank you, Dr. Frank. Moving on to the next question. Uh, this came in from Jackson Crawford, and he wants to know, um, what is the best way to get involved in the CSU community? Yeah, there are um, all sorts of ways for one to become engaged, and I think one of the things that I'm proudest about of, of how uh, our student affairs branch uh, deals with students as they come onto campus is there are all sorts of access points. So for any given student coming onto campus, uh, a campus of 30,000 people um, can seem like a very large place. But there are many ways uh, for one either through uh, oh, your RA on your dorm floor or through a whole variety of uh, volunteer organizational offices that are located in the Lori Student Center to connect with an organization that matters to you. That can be a skiing club, it can be uh, club sports, it can be intramural sports, it can be a service organization. Our students are very active in, in everything from uh, Project Homeless Connect to Cans Around the Oval, a variety of those service things. Uh, there is something available at the Colorado State University campus for virtually everyone and we really encourage students to look into these opportunities, talk to other students, talk to your friends, check out uh, the offices through the Lori Student Center of these organizations, and sign up and, and get involved because it'll make a, a fundamental difference in how connected you feel to this place and, and the great time that should accompany your college education. Dr. Frank, I couldn't agree more. Um, there is so many ways to get involved here on this community. Some of the best advice that I have received when I was going through this process and that I always pass along to prospective students is get involved in one or two clubs or organizations because those are just more familiar faces that you're going to see um, when you're passing throughout classes throughout the day. You're going to meet students in your residence halls. You're going to meet students in your majors. But you'll be amazed at how many more friends you make if you get involved in one or two clubs or organizations, particularly during that first semester here at CSU. Absolutely. Student government, um, the marching band, I mean there are there are no shortage of places for one to, to spend your time and make those connections and friendships that'll last a lifetime. So this next question question comes in from Seth and Seth asks, what advice do you have for students who are making their final decision on what school to attend? Yeah, so what I tell um, students and prospective students and, and their parents all the time is perhaps not the answer you would expect um, from a university president. I, I know I should be plugging Colorado State and all the great things about it, and, and believe me, I feel that way. I've, uh, as I said, two of my daughters have, have attended this university. But the most important consideration should be what feels right to you. Uh, the simple fact is, um, again, speaking to prospective students, we need your talents. We need your passion, your energy, your ideas. There's a lot that my generation has done that we're proud of and we should be proud of, but we've left a lot of heavy lifting for you to do as well. Um, there are challenges out there around how your generation will feed nine billion people, how you'll deal with water issues, uh, climate change. Uh, there are an entire series of, of uh, biomedical and health issues that, that you'll have to deal with as well. We won't deal with those problems without all of you getting engaged. So we need what you have to offer. I believe that you can get a wonderful education at virtually any university in America. I think we all have different strengths and weaknesses, different things that uh, match up perhaps better with some people than others. The most important thing I could say to you as a student is find that place that feels right to you. And, and you'll know that when you find it. There will be a a campus environment that just seems to click for you. If that fits within your budget and, and you and your family can make that work, the most important thing should be to go to the place that feels right to you. Because the one ingredient to your success that none of us can provide, only you can provide it, is your motivation. We hope for the vast majority of you, you'll feel that that matches at Colorado State. But the most important thing you can hear from any of us involved in higher education is find that match and take advantage of it because we need you. Absolutely. And this next question, Dr. Frank, kind of touches upon what you're talking about. This came in from Lauren, and she was wondering what program is CSU most proud of if there is one program? Yeah, that's a tricky question for me because I am incredibly proud of, of all the programs here. I can list a, f uh, a few that are key and, and undoubtedly I'll leave some out. Um, 
uh, our College of Veterinary Medicine is uh, one of the top ranked veterinary schools uh, anywhere in the world. It is, I think, without a doubt, uh, the home of the world's leading comparative oncology unit. Uh, and certainly in th terms of things like uh, experimental equine orthopedics, uh, things that translate directly over into human medicine, uh, we're among the, b the best places in the world for that sort of research. Uh, on the research side, uh, we are uh, of universities without a medical school, uh, the top university in the country for infectious disease related research. Our programs in the College of Natural Sciences uh, chemistry, um, biology, biochemistry, mathematics, statistics, psychology, incredibly strong basic science programs in those areas. Our engineering programs, um, biomedical engineering is certainly one of the most rapidly growing, uh, but mechanical engineering, civil engineering, all these sorts of programs, um, if you compare our statistics on a size-weighted basis, we're very much uh, like a top 10 engineering program and, and uh, uh, the success of those programs reflects that. Great strengths in energy and energy-related research, particularly things like clean and renewable energy, the new energy economy, these really cut across a variety of colleges within the university. And to help capture some of those things, we not only have uh, a variety of, of things in the energy space, the Center for the New Energy Economy, headed by former Colorado Governor Bill Ritter, uh, and the Engines and Energy Conversions Laboratory, headed uh, by one of uh, America's leading young scientists, Dr. Brian Wilson. We also have programs that go beyond the energy space into sustainability writ more broadly. Our School of Global Environmental Sustainability is headed by Dr. Diana Wall, who was the, the recipient of the 2013 Tyler Prize for Environmental Research, one of uh, the country's leading researchers uh, in Antarctic science and in soil biodiversity. Uh, the Warner College of Natural Resources has uh, for years focused uh, on, on classical disciplines in forestry, uh, range stewardship, but wildlife biology, uh, a whole series of, of natural resources, recreation and tourism, human dimensions of natural resources, great programs, of course, in that college. As a land grant, we have uh, one of our foundational elements is our College of Agricultural Sciences. And agriculture is such a broad and diverse industry in, in these times. Uh, it ranges, of course, from large scale uh, production agriculture, which is critically important to, to feeding the nation, but also to to local uh, farm-to-table operations, uh, more emphasis on uh, some of the, the, the uh, organic farming pieces and things that are certainly of more interest recently in sustainable farming practices uh, to, to uh, members, in, uh, particularly in more urban communities. Um, our College of Business is the top-ranked public college of business in the state of Colorado. It has a tremendous undergraduate focus, um, but at the graduate level, they run a program uh, that's been referred to as the Business Peace Corps, Global and Socially Sustainable Enterprise. Um, the white paper from which the Peace Corps was formed in the early 1960s was written by one of our former faculty members, Dr. Maury Albertson, and, and that is sort of that, that commitment to internationalization is, I would say, embedded in CSU's DNA, and you see that reflected uh, in the College of Business in the GSSE program where students uh, obtain that master's degree but also spend uh, a year working on a business-related project in, in the developing world. In our College of Health and Human Sciences, uh, we have a, a tremendous array of very diverse programs from some of the top ranked programs in construction management in the country to some of the top ranked programs in design and fashion merchandising. And then of course in between uh, health and exercise science, food science and human nutrition, uh, a, a restaurant and uh, resort management uh, concentration, wonderful programs in, in sociology, social work. Um, our College of Liberal Arts is our single largest college. Uh, with our new University Center for the Arts, exceptional opportunities for people interested in the visual and the performing arts, but a full array of, of the humanities and social science disciplines as well, um, covering the full spectrum of, of what you would expect at a, at a broad spectrum research university. Uh, it is, in, in so many ways, um, just a, a wonderful institution. While there are many programs that, that we're proud to highlight, I would say the most important thing is if there is something that you're interested in, Colorado State University will have the ability uh, for you to be able to participate in that area. 
One thing I'd like to just add on to that, Dr. Frank, is we're all very proud to be CSU Rams, regardless of the program, regardless of what academic department or college you're in. Uh, that sense of Ram pride is certainly uh, evident here in this community and in the city of Fort Collins. Uh, so this next question came in from Katie, and Katie asks, in your opinion, what is the most important part of your job? That's an interesting question. Um, I, I think one of the most important things that the president of the university can do is tell the great story uh, of what American public higher education, and particularly in land-grant universities, because I am a, a product of land-grant universities and an absolute huge and unabashed fan of the concept of land-grant universities, but we, we need to tell that story. Um, I think that, that this idea that, that our country has had for 150 years, uh, a concept of saying, no matter what your social background, if you have the talent and the motivation, we want to allow you to take advantage of that, to make the most of yourself, and then to use that to contribute back to our society as a whole. That role and mission, that fundamental underlying principle, is every bit as alive and vibrant today as it was in 1862 when Lincoln signed that bill. And yet it's a story that I think we have not told effectively enough. So one of the most important things I believe that the president of, of a land grant can do is tell that story. And along with that um, then comes support from the public for public higher education, support uh, from donors to helping make sure the opportunities and the quality are there. And, and then the other thing I would say that, that is um, critically important to the role of the president is to sort of help set the bar for where the institution wants to be. Uh, when we want to set goals for ourselves, whether those are um, oh, in areas like retention and graduation rates, or whether we want to uh, set goals and standards for ourselves in terms of the safety of our campus or the environment, whether how welcoming and, and inclusive the campus is. I think the president plays a role in setting that tone and saying, this is a priority for us. This particular area is something that we really want to focus on. And, and I think the president has a responsibility to highlight those areas. This next question, Dr. Frank, came in from Tyler, and Tyler was wondering if you could change one thing about CSU during your time as president, what would you change? You know, it, it, it's a tricky question, right, because I, I am tempted um, very much to talk about the financial angle because I have said several times I think the fundamental challenge facing American public higher education in our day is this ongoing transfer of the costs from all of us collectively investing in higher education um, transferring those costs to the individual and I think our generation very much will be remembered for how we rise or how we fail to rise to meet that challenge but if I had a magic wand with, with one wish in it, and I, and I could use it for only one thing, I would probably use it to, to reinforce the idea that CSU should be a culture that allows people to take their passion, their, their energy, their ideas, and make the most of them. I would change um, perhaps the expectations of everyone here uh, in a way that said the single most important thing that we can do is focus on every one of our students and make sure that when they walk across that stage in Moby Arena um, four years after having been there for Ram Welcome, when they walk, walk, walk across in four years and get that degree, that they feel incredibly empowered to go out and take on these challenges that our society faces. I, I fully believe that this generation that's entering our universities now will change the world. And if I could change one thing, it would be to make sure that everyone at this university, I think we already do a good job here, but it would be to make sure that everyone thought their first, second, and third priorities were creating the right environment for those students, because that's the reason we exist. And on that student note, Dr. Frank, this question came in from Shannon. And Shannon was wondering, what is the hardest thing that most students deal with when it comes to adjusting to college from high school? Well, I think there are several things that are different. I think many students find um, 
that the academic work expectations of the faculty are different from what they experienced in high school. Uh, without telling stories about my family out of school, I can tell you that uh, my daughters certainly experienced this. They did well in high school. They felt and were well prepared. Uh, but there was a level of motivation and commitment that's required for academic success in college that I think surprises a lot of people in that first uh, month or two of classes. Fortunately, most people respond to that. Um, they pick up uh, their efforts. We've got great support systems in place uh, if a student gets behind to help them uh, pick that up, to help them learn good study habits and be successful. Um, but I think that's a change. And that change comes also at a time when there's an entirely new level of independence uh, for you as a young person. You're generally moving out of uh, your parents' home. You're moving into a, a much more independent living situation. Uh, the challenges of time management, uh, of making good choices and being responsible, um, that's a big transition, one of the biggest transitions that any human being has in their lifetime. That's why we have focused uh, so much of our attention on our residence life staff and making sure that we have uh, programs in place to help people if they're feeling disconnected uh, from the rest of their classmates or if uh, they're perhaps feeling too connected and making, uh, putting more of their time into the social sphere than into the academic sphere. Whatever the issue is, we've got people that are available that are interested in helping you find the right balance and allowing you to be successful Yes, academically, but also personally, because we want you to leave this place. One of our goals is that you leave this place with a great education, but also that you leave it feeling that this was one of the best times of your life. You'll meet friends that will last forever. Many people meet their husband or their wife uh, or their partner in this situation. We want that sort of environment there, and we want to pr provide that environment that allows people to make that transition and be successful. Thank you, Dr. Frank. This Next question is something that we haven't really talked about yet during this RAM chat. And this came from Ayana, and Ayana wants to know, what is there to do outside of campus in Fort Collins? Well, as someone who uh, attended universities in the Midwest, I would flip that around and say it's maybe more of a question of what isn't available to do. Uh, there are in incredible uh, outside re uh, recreational activities. Um, everything from kayaking, hiking, of course skiing, and you know, a whole set of varieties. The city of Fort Collins is a wonderful city. Uh, the Old Town area has a uh, very vibrant um, nightlife. It's a, sh it's a short drive to Denver with all of the uh, arts and entertainment venues that are there. Fort Collins in its own right is one of the most vibrant uh, music, live music scenes uh, in, in the United States. Um, there are all the traditional things that are in any large university environment. Guest lectures, incredible speakers, groups to become involved with civic causes. Uh, I think the challenge for people at a, at a, in, a, in a community like this one is not the question of what is available. It's where you will put your time and your, your passions. Uh, and you're the only person who can help decide where the best match for that is. On campus, uh, but there's so much to do, not only in the campus community, but also within the city of Fort Collins as well. There's just tons of opportunities for you uh, to get involved in and get outside and enjoy some of those recreational activities that you mentioned. Uh, so this next question came in from Anna, and Anna wants to know, what is your most embarrassing moment as CSU president? <laughs> well, there's a lot to choose from. Um, I would say a, a couple of years ago, um, I have a tendency to write um, somewhat long emails, conversational style emails out, out to the, the campus, and they have become the, the butt of several jokes. Um, but a few years ago, we had a, a weather forecast in the fall that we were going to have the, the first big snowstorm of the season. And so I sent out an email to, to people saying, look, for those of you who haven't been here before, um, this is Colorado. There will be snow. Um, you need to put away your flip-flops, get out your coat. Um, school won't be, won't be canceled. Go to class um, and, and don't email me about why campus isn't closed. Um, in fact, I think if I recall right, um, I'm a lifelong Chicago Cubs fan, and I think I, I said something to the effect that there's about as much chance of my closing school tomorrow as there is uh, of the Cubs winning the World Series. Well, 
the storm turned out to be much worse than anyone had anticipated. Very, very heavy snow. A lot of leaves were still on the trees. We had branches falling around campus, and it, and it turned by the afternoon into uh, a safety concern. And uh, I wound up having to essentially send out another email saying, look, clearly, <laughs> Had we known that the campus was going to start dropping branches, uh, we would have closed the campus sooner. That's one, while I thought it was pretty clever at the time I was sending the email, I, I wish I had the send button back on that one, Will. As a student during that time, I really enjoyed you owning up to the fact that 2 o'clock that classes were canceled because I had a great afternoon uh, the rest of the day. Uh, it was a lot of fun during that, 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 that snow day. Uh, so this next question, Dr. Frank comes in from Corey, and you mentioned you're a Chicago Cubs fan, and we're in the heart of, of Rockies territory right now, so Dr. Uh, Corey was wondering, Dr. Frank, I'm curious if you and Todd Helton have ever been in the same place at the same time. Yes, we have. Um, I've, I've met Todd Helton. Um, a couple people have said, you know, do you realize that your beard looks like Todd Helton? My assumption is that I am a heck of a lot more flattered by that comparison than Todd, than Todd Hilton is. Um, and the Rockies, I, I should say, are a, a wonderful baseball team. Um, my wife has converted over and become a Rockies fan, and unless they're playing the Cubs, I'm a huge Rockies fan, and that's another great thing to do in Colorado. There are the full spectrum, uh, if you're at CSU, of sporting activities in Denver, as well as all the great sporting events that happen here on, on our campus uh, associated with the Rams, and, and great club sports as well. Uh, re in recent years, we've had national club sports championships uh, ranging from baseball to men's and women's lacrosse. Uh, our polo team actually competed for the club national championship. So th there's a full spectrum of sporting activities to, to become involved in. Um, for me, having grown up in northern Illinois on a farm uh, where virtually the only radio broadcast we could get were the Chicago Cubs, um, I, you know, I think that being a lifelong Cubs fan is not something you choose. It's, it's, it's something you are born with. Certainly, Dr. Frank, I would not actively choose to be a Chicago Cubs fan, but I am a native of New York, and so I am a New York Yankees fan. I just have to toss that out there. So, um, yeah, 20, 27 at this point we're at. So best of luck with that whole search. I really wish you all the best. Uh, so this is our last question, Dr. Frank, and we're going to end on this, and I really like this particular question. And this came in from Evan, and Evan was wondering, what is the best part about CSU? Well... To me, the, the best part of the university, w without any doubt, um, are the students. When I need to recharge my batteries, um, when I'm dealing with a particularly thorny issue, um, the best place for me to go on campus is into the plaza uh, just on the east side of the Lori Student Center and you've got the Morgan Library at, at one edge, uh, Clark which has some of the, and the Eddy buildings which have some of the the largest general assignment classroom concentrations on campus, the computer science buildings right there, engineering is just off to the side and it's a crisscrossing area between uh, the residential uh, core of the campus and the academic spine and so if you go there as classes let out around midday especially with with the Lori Student Center and all the things that are available there you will see just this mass of young men and women entering and leaving their classes and the and the energy that just spills into that space. And when you pause to think about that many people investing their time, their energy, their, their passion, their talents, um, and entrusting them to hone their skills at this university and what they will do when they leave the institution and, and go on to, and the ripples that their lives will make in improving the society in which we live, that to me it, it is the best part of the institution. Just the idea of the impact that all of our students will have. And not just will have at some point, but are having. One of the things that I think characterizes CSU is a very active student population. Tremendous volunteerism, tremendous uh, participation in service learning. These are, uh, I think in general, we would be characterized by people who like to roll up their sleeves, who want to make a difference with their career, yes, but they want to make a difference while they're getting that degree at the same time. And the opportunities to participate in a research lab, to participate in, in uh, a service learning or volunteer activity, the opportunity to start making a difference now, that attitude, that atmosphere just pervades the university. It's got a feel of a place 
that wants to roll up its sleeves, wants to get its hands dirty, wants to improve the world uh, in which we live. And, and that's an atmosphere that um, I have just come to love, and, and I think people who are here uh, learn to love that same thing about CSU. I absolutely could not agree more. Uh, that sort of atmosphere is certainly infectious on this campus. Uh, you just you become caught up in it, and you, you love to be in part, and you love to get engaged with whatever you're passionate about. And as we've talked about throughout, throughout this entire RAM chat, there are so many opportunities for you to get involved in whatever you're passionate about. And the, and the development that comes out of that is something that is absolutely amazing. So that's always what I like to share um, with prospective students, you know, from my experience and, and the friends that I've had uh, here at CSU. So that concludes concludes um, our time today with this RAM chat. Uh, a special thank you to Dr. Uh, Frank for joining us here this afternoon. We really do appreciate it. If you had a question that you submitted that we were not able to answer, we would be absolutely sure to follow up with you uh, in the next couple of days or so, so be looking for that um, during your e in your emails and whatnot. Uh, but thank you all very much for tuning into this RAM chat. Uh, prospective students, best of luck as you're going through this process. Um, for incoming students who are going to be freshmen next year, best of luck with the orientation process, and we are so excited to have you on fall for the class of 2018. So thank you all very much for tuning in, and have a great rest of your evening.